Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land, all my peeps in the chat room, all my Memorex viewers that'll look at it later, all my lurkers and, and people lurking around. Glad to have you with me today. I've got Barry Littleton here, uh, an alien experiencer that's going to talk to us about a lot of different topics and things today that should interest about everybody. And uh, I think we've got a, a couple of questions there in the chat room, and I'll scroll up here because I saw one a little while ago, and I'll pull that up and uh, ask that one of Barry once I once I get it hunted down. There we go. Um, okay, this one wants to know. It says thoughts can create your reality. So is it possible? that your thoughts are creating these beings in your mind, which makes you believe that, that they are real. Kind of like how in a dream, it uses known images to portray a message. That's possible for some. <clears throat> That's going to be like an imagination, astral type of contact. Mine was physical, which involved uh, missing time and uh, physical signs of having been somewhere else. So. I kind of fight, I kind of fall in a different category as far as I definitely didn't okay. imagine that and imagine the ships that I saw. And also I happened to be with somebody else when that happened three of the times. And fortunately that type of delusion or imagination is not shared. They saw the ships too and they lost the time too. So that kind of changes it into the, into the realm of physicality and reality more than it does some astral projection or some type of imagination of beings in that way and a thought projection that's different so okay well another question popped up here it says barry how many orbs did you come in contact with at the mountain retreat <laughs> at Seti. okay that's that's an interesting question um you know i i saw x four two of them were around a friend of mine i put up on youtube um one that's called the holographic mountain actually a gentleman that worked out there albert is his name we were just kind of walking towards uh it's pretty late at night and we saw um i saw a couple orbs behind him and then we saw a ship after that so um he didn't see mm -hmm. orbs, but i did so they're pretty common out there i'd say but there's so much activity at that mountain that it's kind of unreal so i mean seeing oh, ships is easy you can see ships and lights coming in and out of the mountain you can see um things up high up that you might think are satellites. Do you see there are two of them? They start powering up, powering down. So just seeing phenomenon out there is kind of common, you know, which is interesting. What was, what would you say is the most interesting thing you saw this time around out there? Uh, there was uh, the same experience. There's this, um, after I'd seen the orbs behind him, we walked into this, uh, what they call the, the circle there, Pleiadian circle, just a, you know, check out the sky and stuff, and you can see the mountain from there. Uh, at this point, I start seeing a, it, it, I thought it was Jupiter at first around this tree over here because it was that bright. And then it starts morphing, and I realized it wasn't. Then the gentleman I'm with starts seeing it. He starts almost hyperventilating when it starts, you know, like a star, what people call a Merkaba, and then it went elongated, then it went uh, vertical also, and it would go back into one solid orb, all right, uh, light. And at that point, it started descending towards the mountain range because next to Mount Adams, there is a, a, a mountain range called Sleeping Lady. And it kind of looks like a woman laying down. That's why they call it that. And on that is, uh, I think it's Flathead Mountain. And this thing started descending towards Flathead Mountain. And as it descends down into the mountain, all right, it goes down out as it should for a second then all of a sudden it became visible again. So what I'm saying is I was perceiving it through the mountain and that's impossible. It's a point of where I'm looking at it to see, okay, it must have descended in front of the mountain and my visual acuity must be off, you know, but the next day it come up above the, the, the treetop again and went back down and did it again, it did it three times. And at this point I'm standing with this gentleman and he's, he's hyperventilating. He's not saying anything, and I'm not either, because I want to make sure that I'm not having some delusional deal. <laughs> Do the, high, the, mount, the mountain air up there or something, you know, I'm not from the high altitude up there. But uh, I asked him, I said, Albert, what are you seeing? And he said, it's impossible. I said, why? What are you seeing? He said, I'm seeing this thing through the mountain. 
Okay, so then it descends a little lower and then it becomes invisible. But the first part of that mountain at the top, it was visible. So that lead me to think that that must be some type of a holographic projection, the mountain itself, at least the top part of it. I mean, that sounds crazy, but that's what we saw. And someone else is here and I witnessed it that, that you know, that changes it a little because I thought, man, maybe I'm just up here freaking out. But it wasn't me. He's seen it too, <laughs> independent of me giving him the suggestion of it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, huh. yeah it's, it's an interesting um, place up there. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another question there is asking, did you go into the ship? Which one? Well, any of them. I've been on, I've been on a few. Yes. Did you go into any there at the Assetti Ranch or was that just viewing the, the ones that were flying around? No, that was just, that was just more viewing. I mean, if you're telepathically active, I could pick up some telepathic information off one of them you know but um for the most part it was seen and they've also got um quite honestly they've got sasquatch running around out there i mean they're not always visible but um if you're sitting in one of those cabins back there like i was i had some weird experiences back there that's all i can say that place is just <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's definitely not like where i'm from i'll say that it's a real power spot and the way James Gilliam has set it up is so that um, it's open for like either Sasquatch, Bigfoot to not be hunted there. And it's a large, large place. You've got people out there meditating, trying to make contact with some of these ships. So it changes the whole atmosphere a little bit of the environment. But as far as being, being on a ship there, not to my knowledge, no. Okay. One of them was asking uh, to you to describe the ships that you saw. <clears throat> out there? Um, a lot of them appear to be what's, um, plasma ships, which is almost like a glowing orb of some type or condensed light ships. Most of them look like that. Um, the third night I was there, I was actually talking to my friend from New Zealand and, uh, she was in a tent kind of towards what's called the field of dreams. And we went walking out there just talking and we saw some that come in kind of close. And to me, they looked to be a little saucer, saucer type. You know that uh, a city ranch is in Washington State, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Trout Lake, Washington, really close to the Washington and uh, Oregon border. There, you come, yeah, you come into like I came into Portland and went from Portland to the ranch. So. Yeah. I've never been to that area. It was um, quite interesting. <laughs> I've been <to> Colorado, <laughs> and that's mountains there, but it's not the same type of mountainous view and that type of trees and just the thousands of trees like that it's it's pretty exciting it's a nice state yeah i've never been up in that direction i'd love to go sometime sounds like a lot of fun it's pretty cool <laughs> one of them was asking earlier if we was going to talk about cern uh what do you make of that cern collider you know <clears throat> i honestly when i was much younger they used to call what CERN the Great Hadron Collider. They called that a cyclotron, okay? An atom smasher to a certain degree. So I think that we should be more concerned with the exotic particles that they're actually making that only might last for a millisecond or whatever. But it's a lot more than just the hogs bison that I think is more something we've been fed by the, by the media. But they're creating all sorts of other exotic particles that could be have an array of uses. So that's what I think is maybe more interesting. As far as um, them creating some big black hole that's going to envelop the earth and all that and jumping our timeline, that seemed to be something that was more tied to John Teeter, who was somebody who contacted Art Bell like in the late 90s. And some of that story is very interesting, but um, I don't see, and he said that they would inadvertently discover time travel. And I'm not sure if the company even existed yet when he said that. So that's kind of what's thrown that thing like they're going to envelop us. But I don't think they have the power to do that. And there are a lot of other Hadron Colliders right now that are in operation besides CERN that people don't seem to talk about. Like I think Fermilab is one. But they're up. So that's something to be advised there. And then we've got somewhere like the Anderson Institute, which I think is no longer around, and private sector that's working on true time control technology. You know, time that's based on 
frame dragging and um, uh, the uh, curve space curve time as far as uh, uh, curve curved uh, vortexes, and that's you know that that changes everything to a different degree. People talk about the Mandela effect quite a bit now. You know, the, these are called uh, closed time light curves. Anybody wants to look that up? Look up time closed time light curves and frame dragging. That's the beginning of true time control technologies right there. So I think that what's being done in the private sector is a lot more advanced than anything we're seeing from CERN, my opinion on it. What, for, for, the, for those of us who are not real savvy into all this, uh, can you give some kind of an example of what they could do with this time controlling technology? Well, I mean, one thing to look at is what is hard evidence, like um, for advanced, for example, medical field, what they're starting to use um, different stasis fields, all right, for things from MRI all the way to, uh, they're trying to replace cryogenics with the stasis field instead of freezing the organs. They're trying to do that for organ like rejuvenation and organ storage. So that's one mm -hmm. thing I'm looking there is what we're seeing as far as in the medical field that are actually affecting the time field. That's, that's one thing. And I try to keep some of that more scientific and realistic. We've all heard about things like Montauk and the Philadelphia experiments, which may or may not have been true. I'm, it's not for me to judge. But right now, I'm more looking at what can be achieved with modern technology and what can we see that's hitting the market right now. You know, um, that's, that's what I say, because any of these devices that are um, based on these principles, affect the fabric of our reality and that's that's true that's not a joke you've got what's called subluminal propagation of information which is actually sending information data backwards through time so if you have somewhere that is working on advanced time control technology and drone wise they're sending drones back to the past to record things they can also send information back as well that that's that's putting a whole nother thing to this that doesn't make things like the Mandela effect such a joke anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. There could be little small time skips, people feeling deja vu, which may be a disturbance in the time field around you, for all we know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Um, let's see if the, does, I feel like does I didn't anybody... <laughs> well, yeah, you, you know, th th there's so much to it, I think it's difficult to really answer it in, a, you know, a, uh, an elaborate sense of the word but yeah that that gave some information on it um i was looking over here at the chat room to see if anybody's got any other questions up but i'm not seeing any right now um i was looking at some of the things that you posted on facebook uh here recently and one of the things that um well there many of them really uh sparked my interest but you had a, a thing up about chakras and uh there was the, the thing that I had never seen before was where you put the image of the hand up and the joints of the fingers mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, that you had the self and then you had um, uh, earth, fire, water, and air uh, representing the, the five fingers on the hand. Uh, explain a little bit about that to uh, me and the audience. That was dealing with uh, <clears throat> what's called the warp physics right now. Um, it was, uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, basically, it's correlating your chakras. And kind of what have you put that up is there's been a lot of discussion right now with a lot of people that are removing their chakras, trying energetically to remove the energy vortexes of your astral body, okay, and of the physical body. And I was just wanted to tell, I get asked about that a lot. So I just wanted to address the fact that I think it's a terrible idea. Because if it was that bad, Things like the Upanishads and the Vedic would do. I mean, that things that go that far back, fifteen hundred years BC, would have told you if it was some type of a matrix control system, but like it's a, a movie. I mean, I'm sorry, this is reality here. And if you're removing the energy vortexes of your body, what you're doing is leaving yourself open to entity attack. Is what you're doing. So that's kind of what I was addressing there. But the chakras are. Energy vortex of the body, like the throat, the heart, the root chakra, the navel, the, um, the third eye. That's just basically trying to 
increase the energy flow, clean out those chakras, and uh, increase the flow of them. We're actually trying to achieve God consciousness, whatever your perception of God is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then how does the Who's hand the correlate into that? I'm sorry, what's that? How did the hand uh, correlate into the chakras? That was that one was dealing with, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what's called mudras, M-U-D-R-A-S, which are actually formations of the hand to help inco incorporate astral energy and the energy flow to the astral body. So what those were were set mudras, different formations you can make with your hand to increase that energy flow for even certain areas of the body. And that chart you're talking about was pretty advanced because it was correlating that with certain star charts and certain zodiac signs. So that's kind of putting it all into a, a science there, a physics type of science that that chart was. So that's what the hand would have to do with that. And that also comes through with people that are hand heal healers and people working with rape, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, one of them I put up, I think, was actually the bone structure, how it goes all the way up, numbered down. So. It's also dealing with the, some of that mathematics is a bit beyond me, but I put it up for somebody that is smarter than I that can probably make a better chart. <laughs> yeah, I was intrigued by it. It was, uh, you know, over my head. Uh, you know, it's something that, that I didn't really understand. I'd need a teacher to, to really walk me through it, but I was very intrigued with that. Uh, we've got a couple more questions in the chat room here. One of them says, do you feel threatened by the orbs? No, I don't. No, and um, something to be aware about some orbs doesn't mean that they're all entities. Some of these glowing lights we see bouncing around are actually rips in the space-time continuum, okay? So it's actually kind of a tear between dimensions, universes. So some of these orbs we're seeing is actually that, and people don't always think of it that way since it's a, a light like that. It must be an orb. It must be a being or an entity. No, it could also be a universe onto itself. You know, we have to be very careful because once we get to a level of what they call the Merkaba body, the energy body, the dream body, it doesn't conform to the physical laws like this body does. So that means we can start doing things, becoming a vessel of some type, some way to contract our reality around us more than what we're doing now. That's mm -hmm. when the creative, the creative principle crosses us as immortal souls if that makes sense or is that and then that brings me to another question when a lot of times people will take pictures and in the pictures the orbs show up you don't see them with the naked eye but you see them on the film in the camera what are those you know those like i said those could be either those could also be beings the dimensions are getting kind of thin right now and the camera has the ability to pick up things that the visual visual uh human visual system doesn't so i think that's what you're seeing a lot is just these things that are energetic flashes we've got the fact is we've got beings that are jumping in our field of awareness all the time every day on this planet but we're so looking for a glass darkly and so isolated perceptually wise that we can't perceive it it takes most of our energy just to make it to work and pay your bills and take care of your kids you're not going to have a lot of free energy to try to sit up and perceive orbs bouncing around most of the time. So people don't have enough freed up energy to have that that energy passing through the pineal gland, which recently someone said doesn't exist, which it very much does. <laughs> How many people right now feeling a throb in their in their third eye, it's unreal. I hear about that every day. So Yeah. Picking up on the energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess th that kind of brings us uh to the embedded beings. <laughs> ah, you're watching that, were you? <laughs> <laughs> um we want to go over what what they are actually yeah you know <clears throat> that came up the first person i had heard talk about it was linda moulton howe and she mentioned it like probably back in the 90s once and then it came up again recently and what this is is she started getting contacted by various masseuses okay that have clients in like on the table and when they're working on them, normally around the neck area, they start seeing, or when this, when this client comes in, they start seeing gray aliens, like visually in their mind, in mind's eye. But then when they're working on this client, one starts, uh, holographic projection starts rising out of clients. 
Um, one lady had mentioned that it was connected to suddenly this client's cell phone went off and it was customary for them to have the client to turn the cell phone off before they begin the massage. So the, the phone was off, but it made some type of a noise that retracted this gray holographic projection back into the client. And each masseuse has said that the clients seem unaware of it. So that kind of takes us down to, you know, what are abductees? I'm more experiences, but um, those that have been abducted and been implanted with these physical devices, I don't mean the scalar ones that people are, are thinking about that are attached to people's souls and attached to their energy field, which I'm not denoting are not real, but I'm more interested in the physical ones that were removed, like uh, people like Dr. Roger Lear before he passed. He removed several real objects from people and did um, microanalysis on them, microscopic analysis on them. So that, I mean, that, that, that changes the whole deal of that. So what are we dealing with there? What is Morgellons disease that is currently being sprayed in these chem, these chem trails that have this uh, weird fiber optic network, nanotechnology? It's things like that that aren't just uh, people doing conspiracy anymore. Some of this you can look up scientifically for yourself and verify it. It's not just conspiracy anymore. I try to keep it in the realm of reality, if that makes sense. But invading beings, I mean, if we're talking about some type of an invasion, all right, how would it really be done from an advanced civilization? They're not going to come in here and try to blow us away. It's not going to work like that. It's going to be done in a way that's subtly. And if you've got people walking around with implants, people that are having this gray overlay, and you're having a lot of people that are masseuses now coming forward, let them on the house said after she announced that on that Dreamland show, she started getting contacted by a bunch of people. So I think it's probably maybe a little more common than what is admitted. It's probably like I'd say maybe 60% of our population has had contact in the dream state or somewhere and is unaware of it. You know, so. This food for, food well, for thought. I'm wondering, with the, these holographic embedded beings, I'm wondering why. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, there's something that comes along with the abduction phenomenon, which is what I call VRST for virtual reality scenario technology. And you've got a lot of abductees that have been exposed to this. You know, you've got these beings that are presenting projections of loved ones to, to put you at ease or, um, scenarios like almost like being on star trek holodeck scenarios that aren't there you know that that is mm -hmm. that is a real problem in the abduction phenomenon so you tie that into these implants or whatever's going on and this holo these embedded beings which is also called um they call it the gray overlay also i mean that is that is some type of consciously it brings down to what are our containers and people are so obsessed with the religion right now and dealing and going with what religion tells them that they don't pay attention to the world they really live in in that way. You know, what is, what would be a takeover actually be? What would be real demonic activity that's outside of some biblical reference? How would it be going down with technology right now? And I think that needs to be, you know, verified. Like Morgellons is one that really comes up. And that's something that they're saying right now. At first it was called, uh, excuse me, forgive me, I think it was, parasitis of some type they were calling it parasitis which means basically you think you have bugs crawling on you and you've got people yeah. who have skin lesions you know and that's uh that's a totally different thing these skin lesions are uh, kind of producing these fabrics and when the fabrics are looked under electron microscope they're showing that they have carbon nanotubes uh and also uh and uh what's called um uh, nano arrays that's that, that that's advanced genetics RNA, that's, that's not something that's just, you know, in people's minds. That's real scientific deal. Nightline did something about it recently. I think I posted that too. So, yeah. food for thought, like I said. Yeah. You know. uh, well, well that's, I said that, that more, that's gallon, more it, it, it actually spreads, and the fibers spread in two things, in uh, under blue light, and then also uh, with um, alkanized, al al alkanized blood. 
and how many people are being pushed to be vegans right now. It's very interesting. They've got alkalized blood. And it's also, interesting that you bring up the blue light because uh, I have seen advertisements on television where they are treating psoriasis with ultraviolet light. <laughs> um, it probably works too, but now that we know about the Morgellons and that that creates what's called a nano spread, which is those fibers spreading on your body, in your body, and are forcing people to be vegans right now, you know, which I'm just yeah. saying it's something to be aware of. They're pushing you to do that, and everyone's got one of these phones in your face. Heck, I had a kid tell me the other day when I, it was time for dinner, I was at a friend's house, and I, he, instead of getting his sister, he starts texting. I said, why aren't you just going to go over there and knock on her door? He looked at me, no. I'm not going to do that when I could just text her. I said, excuse me. <laughs> Boy, that's what's really happening to our society, you know. So you got enough blue light in your face there. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess when they go out on dates now, they don't even talk to each other. They they just sit there and text back and forth on their telephones. And <laughs> <laughs> probably it takes some selfies. Everybody got. I just saw something the other day. My friend's daughter. She had a a selfie stick. I said, well, "What the heck is a selfie stick?" Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, yeah, full of yep. selfies of themselves. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we got some more questions over here in the chat room, so let's see what they've got to ask. Let's see. Um, one of them wants to know, oh, this is a good one. Barry, have you ever smoked weed? And if so, what was your experience like? Well, I mean, anybody that is experienced a little, ex experiment a little bit, um, I smoked it and I got high. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it, you know? I mean, I think that um, our society deals with that particular drug very much wrong. Um, you've got right now, I think we're watching the prohibition of marijuana, the same as alcohol. You know, how many states are legalizing it, how many aren't, how many are having actually, there's a big medicinal factor there that isn't just getting high, but I mean, for people that have certain ailments that actually the hemp does help, so. I think that needs to be addressed yes. a little bit more than just um, it's the gateway drug to, which is the gateway to what I'm still trying to figure out, you know. But yeah, we could do a whole show about marijuana, as far as I'm concerned, because uh, you know while I'm not a partaker of the plant, I do believe that it is one thing that would certainly put this country back on its feet financially if we would turn the farmers loose and let them uh, grow all they wanted to grow. <laughs> There's so many things that could be done with it. I think that that would cure the woes of the economy. Uh, but hey, you know, like I say, that we could we could do the whole show just just on weed. <laughs> well, you know, I, I noticed I noticed in Washington and Oregon because that it's legal in that state as those states as compared to my state and it's not. But I noticed a great deal of different attitude there. You know, and same as Colorado, it's different there too. So maybe it needs to be looked at. Even the crime rate, I think, has dropped in those places a little bit. So, you know. Well, yeah, they're not thinking about crime if they're hopped up on weed, you know, and they're just wanting some bags of chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. But it goes back to things like, you remember, what was it, that old show, uh, Dragnet? The Dragnet used to pump mm -hmm. that real hard, you know. <laughs> Reefer Madness, like, <laughs> you take a couple hits of that stuff, you're finished. You know, they still have that, <laughs> that, that stigma that if you do smoke it at night for insomnia or whatever you might have you don't really deserve to have a job and you don't deserve to be a functioning person in society because you might have reefer madness i mean that's that's ridiculous <laughs> i mean it's uh... <laughs> but it's all right to go to the bar and drink what they call spirit yeah. okay that's called that for a name for a reason it's okay to go get bombed out of your mind um as like as long as you don't drive but you might go home and, you know, beat up your family or ruin your life. But right. it's all right as long as you don't drive because it's legal. Right. Well, that's, yeah. that's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's the propaganda, you know, that we've, we've all been handed to all our, of our lives. And there's an amazing amount of the populace that is just willing to swallow that hook, line, and sinker, um, you know. It, well, they tell us that, so it must be true, you know, and they walk around like a bunch of Stepford wives and <laughs> they don't, uh, they don't stop to think, now, wait a minute, 
you know, just because they're saying it, don't make it so. Mm -hmm. But that's like, we've got another one over here that wants to know if you can please talk more about the vegan thing. The vegan thing? Um, you know, I, I, I try not to say yeah. things that offend people because I have some friends that are that are vegans. But it's just that um, my understanding is, you know, it creates an alkanized bloodline or blood, blood, which is really beneficial, my understanding. But then my understanding is that Morgellon actually flourishes in that environment, in that blood, in that bloodstream. And so if you've got people that are being exposed to this through chemtrails, which is what has been proven now, that's where these things are coming from. They're being sprayed. And, you know, I, I find that interesting because where I'm from, we have contrails, but they evaporate real quick. You know, they're not, they don't stay that long. It's, it's, it's a water thing. But these other ones, like the ones I saw in Washington, it was totally different with these these things coming the planes were doing. So that's that that's a real deal, the chemtrails there. Um, as far as the vegan thing, I'm just saying that I'm noticing it exponentially how much veganism is being forced down our throats right now and how certain people are rebelling against it. And it's different between being a vegan and a vegetarian. I once tried to be a vegetarian. I, I didn't last much more than a year, but I did try. And it's beneficial, you know, by all means. But veganism is slightly different it's creating that blood more that i cannot alkalinize blood that is allowing that virus to maybe flourish in your body that disease so i'm just wondering what is with that between that and people watching that looking at their phones and knowing that that actually that blue light makes under the um environment of a lab it makes this weird nanofibers expand and self-replicate once again, kind of sounds like nanotech is sounds like that's uh, engineered somewhere, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Considering we just found that type of technology about the last uh, 20 years, we could even analyze it. So, you know, some of these people having these implants are going back 50, 60 years. So, yeah. anyway, I hope that addressed the vegan thing. So, I'm just saying, is there a connection to why that's being pushed on us so much right now in terms of this? more gallons in terms of this, whatever's happening with that, that this, this fibers that are being produced. That would also tie in with the uh, juicing or juice fasting that seems to be so popular right now too. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> well, it's a dangerous territory right here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> I had um, I had interactions with a vegan not all that long ago, and she was also lactose intolerant and glucose intolerant. So she had me over for lunch, and we're sitting there eating for lunch. We're having tomato juice, tomato soup. That's it. There was like some celery in there. That's it. I was like, man, give me water. I was like, man, don't you have like some some punch or? <laughs> <laughs> you like that little old lady on that commercial they had years ago. Where's the beef? Uh, yeah, yeah, the old woman, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was the guest, so I just kind of had my, my tongue tied. I was like, man, I couldn't wait to get out of there, go get a salad or something. <laughs> Anyway. Ah, she'll never get a man like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, her mama didn't cage you the way a man's heart's through his stomach. Oh, no. She, she didn't have that at all. But she had health problems. So, I mean, I do understand there was circumstances, but it's something you got to warn a brother before you. <laughs> or you have more for some tomato juice, you know. <laughs> he might be hungry. <laughs> That's like having V8 for all your life. I couldn't make it on V8, man. Come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> V8 the bowl. Oh. <laughs> we got another question here. It says, are the grays different than shadow people? You know, my understanding is yes. Now, I'm not interacted with grays, really, and my I've not been abducted, so my experiences weren't like that. But to my understanding, yes, and the shadows are more, um, you can see shadows more rapidly. They seem to share our dimension much more with us. They, uh, you can see them out of your peripheral quite a bit. Now, when I first started, like, seeing in a different way, all right, I 
started noticing two types of shadows. Some I can only see in peripheral, but some of them were small, um, ovular, and others were more ovular, more, more oval in a way, instead of spherical, they're more oval, all right? And I saw one of those attack a, a um, co-worker, actually, when we were closed after hours, it came and it attached to her root chakra and kind of went down to her, to her crown chakra and went down to her root chakra and started pulsating. And physically, with my normal eyes, I can see her actually as a bowling alley, and she's just bowling, and she's like, we can bowl after hours, and she's just, I mean, she's about to make a turkey. She's knocking the heck out of those pins. And you can see her frustration, so I can see this thing is, is feeding on her. Doing whatever it's doing is producing thoughts to kind of make her energy feel angering or sad or something that it can feed on that type of energy. So the grays are more, I've heard several different types of them, even for other experiencers, but they're more, I think, of a physical type of abduction and something that has to do with our genetics a little bit more than just an energetic thing. You know, there's a lot of people getting on experimented on by the grays. They're uh, having negative experiences. I used to stand against that a lot because my experiences were positive. But as now that I've talked to, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people that are experiencers, I see how many have been traumatized by their experiences and are not as blessed as I was during mine. So I try to acknowledge that. Does that make sense? That answer that question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, one thing we haven't talked about, and I don't see any new questions over here, so I'll ask you about this one. Crop circles. Ah. Um, <clears throat> what, what creates the crop circle? And what, what, if there's beings behind that, what kind of beings are they? And what are the messages supposed to be that are, we are supposed to be getting from these crop circles? You know, I've kind of approached that from two aspects now. One of them is um, uh, Linda Moulton Hal. I really respect her work, but she did something that is correlating these to self-activating symbols, all right, which is kind of some type of a terraforming we're undergoing. And then you've got Patty Greer. I met her at the SETI conference there. Um, she's on a panel with me. She, um, she's she got a book uh, or a video called The Crop Circle Diaries. And it's a, it's very interesting. It's based on Dr. Levengood's work. And he's passed now. But um, she's suggesting that they're coming from the earth also. But there's also um, um, an extra a space factor that comes too. They're plasma balls that have been seen making these. If you go to my YouTube channel, I've got two videos on there, um, Crop Circles 1 and 2. And uh, the second one, I make sure it wouldn't seem like I was putting Dr. Howell's and Patty's research against each other. I was actually trying to combine them. But on that video, in the comment section, the first comment is I put down um, these uh, plasma balls that are actually seen making a crop circle, for real. And Patty Greer on that movie had taken it and reversed it and reverse the speed of it backwards. And for a second, just a millisecond, you can see what appears to be a line of communication going between these two plasma balls. And to me, it looked like maybe binary, but that's what we've got going on. So I think we're looking at Mother Earth communicating with perhaps her parent star, okay? And with other intelligences, and also other intelligences using these as probably time portals as well as self-activating symbols. Um, back to Dr. Howell's research with that, she had um, re released something that was called, uh, from a whistleblower, that was called the Palto Carrot Document, which was supposed to be back-engineered um, extraterrestrial technology. And that came about of some, of some photos she was sent that were called the Chad Dragonfly Drone and also the Big Basin dragonfly drone. These drones that were seen flickering in and out of uh, visual for like maybe just a few minutes and people got pictures of them, all right? But on the tails and on certain boxes on these drones are these very odd symbols. <laughs> and I'll be if they don't look a lot like crop circles and a lot like this document that Dr. Howe has that has these, uh, from the gentleman that said it, said he worked in Silicon Valley on instrument on drones similar to that not quite as advanced but that uh, he specialized in what they call self-activating 
language, the self-activating symbols that were on that drone's tail, all right? And they look a lot like crop circles. So I think if we take that and combine that with something like, let's say, Glebeke Tempe or Stonehenge, Stonehenge has been proven to be, I want to say it, it's vibrating, the diameter of it, it's vibrating at 12 hertz, I want to say, not megahertz, but 12 hertz, which is around the same frequency that we start having alpha state consciousness, all right? So I'm trying to think, what were they terraforming? What were they trying to entrain? So are we dealing with machines and symbols that have been on this earth for millions of years? And if we're dealing with a real terraforming project like Star Trek II or Star Trek II, yeah, the Genesis project, what would it be like for real though? From a type one, type two civilization that's visiting us, contacting us and terraforming this planet and our personal containers. What would it be like? Yeah, that's fascinating. Gee. So it's coming from a different a couple aspects. I'm kind of trying to combine it a little. I hope that makes sense mm -hmm. you know, to a certain degree. Is it possible that, well, I guess anything's possible, but the if the crop circles are activated by these plasma orbs, I guess my first question would be, where are the plasma orbs coming from? You know, that's what um, I might have actually offended uh, Patty Greer because I didn't totally agree with that they come from the earth because some of the plasma, including that video that's on my YouTube channel, it, you can see actually the orbs going up. And a lot of reports have seen these orbs coming down and then going back up. So that implies that there definitely is a space factor there or an extraterrestrial factor of some type there. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So some type of extraterrestrial sends down the plasma orbs, activates what in, a, in this portal area, this crop circle, that in turn calls in these drones or you know whatever i guess it would want to call in with this that have the same self-activating code i would say probably so and or it might also be matching up with some of those crop circles like if you even look at the formation of glebeke tempe which is the city that blew out of the desert probably about what was it 25 years ago or so twelve thousand years old so you've got some of the oldest to 12 000 years bc so you've got some of the oldest things there ever seen but if you look at the structure of these circles some of them do look similar to certain crop circles so it makes you wondering what type of a computer system is this most computer systems of my limited knowledge have a software and a hardware system so we might be seeing right here the um the hardware the crop circles so it comes down to what is the software that's that's maybe the question you know what i mean yeah. Like I said, I think they're yeah. multifaceted. I've heard even also, too, that they're also used by time travelers as marking points for their entry market or entry and exit marking points. All right. And that some of these plasma balls may actually be the time travelers, which are us after our, we've evolved beyond the physical body and we become a type of an orb or type of a plasma type of container for our consciousness. You know, it gets into what are truly the containers for consciousness. How many different containers are they of what type and how many dimensions? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot more than just this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Got another question over here. It says, do you ever see groups of the small bubbles totally cover a person? No, I can't say that I have. No. Now, I've seen it afterwards, like even at a SETI, a couple of my friends were taking pictures and it looks like fine. But then when you get, when they get, you know, on, on the film, actually, on the, on the camera, they, they've got orbs all around them. But you couldn't mm -hmm. see it when they're just standing out there in the field. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of times mm -hmm. it's not perceptible by your visual eyes unless, you know, you're in the realm where your pineal gland is having a flash or active, you might, you might see something, but 
as far as me personally, no, I've not seen that. Very interesting. Your audience is very interesting in orbs. <laughs> uh, one wants to know, do you think all this that you see could be human technology? What I've seen, absolutely not. Uh, especially the ships I've been on board. Um, the technology, especially incorporating its organic nature, is literally thousands of years beyond anything we have here right now. Um, even in science fiction, it's far beyond that. So, no, it's not the government. It's not, it's not people here. I mean, I can only speak from my personal experiences, but uh, it's, not, uh, it's not human stuff here. One wants to know, uh, what do you think the goals are of those that are interacting with the humans? Well, I think it comes down to how many different groups you have here that are interacting with people. And I mean, I'm beginning to think it's nearly endless. There must be hundreds. Like the beings I've dealt with, most people have not, or are not even aware of. And they're not the beings that come from, oh, the Pleiades, oh, Sirius, <laughs> oh, all these little places that are like almost too convenient. You know what I mean? When we're dealing with the phenomenon, mm -hmm. it's not these individuals, these beings were telling me, you know, they were sectors of space they're using things like that and light years that are so far out in galaxies beyond this one that it didn't hardly make sense um you have some factions that are here obviously working on genetics for various reasons you know the beings i've dealt with are more interested in the preservation of earth and said that it's been almost destroyed before and shown me things in the past so that's i would say that uh, it just varies according to what group you're interested in. And we know this much, there's several factions that aren't fans of humanity and are just waiting for humanity to ruin our stewardship of this earth, which we're close to doing now through nuclear technology war. We're close to blowing, we're, we're close to going down for the count. I don't do, I'm not trying to sound pessimistic, yeah. but I'm just being realistic. I mean, I like most people can't hardly watch the news anymore. I mean, you want to get a, a, a wave of depression Watch the news. <laughs> Watch the election. Good <laughs> Lord. I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> I get a great hair thinking about it. A great hair right there. <laughs> I do a current event show here at noon every day. And oh, believe me, it, it uh -huh. is a mess what is going on. It's oh. hard to keep your sense of humor when you're looking at that stuff. I know it's difficult for the audience even just to hear it, but I'm the one having to wade through all this stuff and pick and choose, you know, what I'm going to have to bring out. Uh, and uh, well, there's probably five or six times as much stuff that I have waded through just for the articles that I bring to the table. So, you know, for me, it's almost devastating mm -hmm. the, the amount of stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> when I, when I was younger on HBO, they had a show that wasn't very long lived, but it was called Not Necessarily the News. Right. That, uh, a lot of what I'm seeing, it would be almost comical if it yeah. wasn't real. If it wasn't real, it's like it's like watching uh, uh -huh. Saturday Night Live. And, and I can't believe it. I mean, it was it, it's scary because I don't have any children. And if I did, I'd be very worried about if they're going to even have, you know, a, a world yeah. here in the next 30 years yeah. or so. It's getting really bad. That's just my opinion. If they'll even be here for the world. I mean, you know, that since they're starting up all these wars, you know, they're going to be trying to ship everybody that they possibly can out to fight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, and it, with the amount of technology we have now, these wars aren't going to be anything like they were in the past. They're, they're, not, they're not going to be like what we're familiar with now. I think a large bit of the war is going on now, you know, and it, it's coming celestial. There's a war here happening celestial. We've got souls that incarnate here, half of us, all of us wiped clean, come here incarnating without soul life memories. For an immortal soul spirit being as we are, that's a major problem. And a lot of people say, oh, it's a school. You agreed to a contract to this. You don't know that. You can't remember it. What good is that if you, what is good if you can't remember your immortal soul life, life events? That's a problem. You can't utilize that here in this in this reality. Then you, you pass and you really don't know what's going to happen. You go asleep again. 
you wake up asleep. That's this 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 place is a church. So what you've got is a pineal planet where you have creative geniuses, like almost if we're gonna go Star Wars, like Jedi type of people that obviously didn't conform to something. They got wiped clean, sent to a present a prison planet, along with the deviants, the criminal, the criminal insane. They were wiped clean and sent to a prison planet also. So what you have is a planet where you have parts of the population is almost angelic, creative, and you've got the other that are vicious murderers and vicious psychopaths. And <laughs> in turn, you have a very unstable, dangerous population living on unstable platonic plates. Now, if you're from a, a ship and a higher dimension, a higher, a different planet, whatever, are you going to want to come hang out here? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Where there's a bunch of microwaves in the atmosphere, a bunch of metals that make you choke out. <laughs> oh, you know, it's a, you're not. <laughs> you have to look over your back because your neighbor may come up with a club and, and beat you over the head and take you. Uh -huh. I mean, you know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry, just uh, put some levity there. <laughs> It's, it's yep. <laughs> real, in reality, you know, <laughs> was it John Candy said, Spaceballs? Waiter, check, please. <laughs> yeah. I almost feel like when I do my show today, I need to start it out now. Look, I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bizarre that, you know, <laughs> who, who would have ever thought some of this stuff up? My goodness. Well, let's see, with some more questions over here. It says, um, uh, I was just wondering if these beings appearing as maybe two inch or three inch bubbles ever swarmed a person had a strange dream this morning about that. I don't know. I'll throw this in as a little caveat though. Um, a lot of people are familiar with the Zimbabwe children incident from 1994. Do you remember that? No. There was about, oh, about 30 kids that came running to their teacher and said that they saw a ship and it was like a gray type of being came out of the ship and told them, please take care of the planet. You're killing the planet and said a whole bunch of things about the future of the planet. All right. Those kids now are, you know, approaching 30, <clears throat> excuse me. And a lot of them remember now instead of seeing a gray being or under hypnosis, they remember only seeing orbs, a couple of orbs floating around them and all the information was coming from these orbs. So never actually was a little gray being or a ship. It was just these orbs. Once again, giving some type of a holographic virtual reality scenario projection to these kids. But you know, it comes down to, uh, you start wondering, okay, what the message that was given to these kids, they said, well, the, being, the way the being looked when they were kids, they said the way the being looked scared them because of the eyes and everything. But then the, the information mm -hmm. itself that came through was only about please help, please help. And of course it's children that you'd be able to get through that are the future, okay? So I think right. dealing with that, we think of what kind of intelligence was behind that communication. And it was a beneficial one. So what type of communication and intelligence was in those orbs? That's kind of what you're left with, I think, evaluating situationally wise anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have never heard of orbs, you know, swarming anybody. Um, although I have seen some pictures where maybe you only see a couple of orbs in the picture. And then other pictures where, um, as I have a friend in Arizona that took a picture out in her barn one day when she was feeding the horses. And there was one of these orbs in the, in the picture in her barn. And, uh, but I've never heard of them actually attacking or, or swarming anybody. Yes. Sorry, you there? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I think it was <laughs> wait a second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I haven't, I personally have never heard of orbs ever attacking anyone. They're just always seen floating around people. Um, I have some friends that sent me a couple of pictures. They've got some orbs on there, but they could see them visually so they snapped a picture of it and it's on the camera too so i mean so I've, I've never heard of them just swarming and being hostile in that way or even the communication from them being hostile you know what i mean so yeah <clears throat> well what kind of projects and stuff are you working on right now 
I'm actually trying to, I've been trying desperately to construct a couple of books um, that are in the odds of these uh, illustrations I have actually. So that would be um, one book that references childhood experiences, another that's adult onhood ex onset experiences, what I call them, and then a third that is uh, dealing with the technologies I've seen on Boardcraft and my limited understanding of them. So that's kind of where I'm at now. And it's, um, a lot of this information almost died with me, so I kind of just am trying to put it out there. And you've got so many young star seeds out there now, people that are being born awake or being born with past life memories like me, that it's time for this to go ahead forward. And I think it's, in reality, a chance for humanity's attempting to save itself to a certain degree. And I think it's the young people that are representing that right now. Yeah. Uh, what, how soon do you think you have your books done? Uh, the first one should be probably about, it looks probably about six weeks or so. About six weeks. I've still got a few illustrations I have to get done from Christine Dennett, who's been most patient with me. So. <laughs> do you have a publisher or are you going to put them out yourself? Uh, it'll be probably myself. Cool. Cool. Going to get some up on Amazon, you know, we can go to promoting it when you get them up. That'll be cool. That'll be cool. If anybody actually wants to look at them, you know, a lot of oh shit, a lot of the information is on my YouTube channel. Also, I'm not done with that yet, but um, some of the information will be in the book. Is on some of those little quick videos or just a few minutes. But I'm starting to slow show some of the illustrations there. So if you want to go to Barry Littleton on YouTube and check out that, it might help a little. At least give a frame of reference more than what I can do verbally here. At least to show some illustrations because she's done about 24 of them for me. So. It's time to start showing a few of them. That's right. You're far more popular than you give yourself credit for. <laughs> well, you know, there's something to be said, honestly, is that <clears throat> one, it's a forgiving audience because the truth is <laughs> I could be insane. Don't think so. No, just I could be <laughs> <laughs> I could be a liar <laughs> or I could just be a gifted storyteller. So those things are very real possibilities. And the fifth is I could be telling the truth. So it's a lot of people by their own discernment be able to feel in that way. So that's really a nice. And I didn't, uh, you know, honestly, I, I never wanted to say anything. I had that act, I had a car accident and I, I died during the accident. I got kind of resuscitated. But, uh, you know, I never was talking about any of this for sure before that accident. So that's one thing it did bring into my life. I'd taken these brain injuries and, they said I'd never be able to remember my life or be anything more than a vegetable, but uh, the creator saw it different. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's uh, kind of the sad now. So I at least owe it to creator to try to spread the information because it wouldn't have done much good if I would have died with it and then hoarding it for myself to enlighten myself. That's not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've had you here about an hour, so I guess it's probably about time to shut it down. So I will thank all the folks that we've got out there in the chat room for their questions and, and hanging with us today and all the lurkers that are out there that are too shy to come in the chat room and all my member X viewers that'll do it later on. Glad to have you with us today. Uh, please uh, like and share the video if you like what we did here and uh, you know, we'll have Barry back on again soon some more topics and stuff uh, to talk about and you guys save up your questions in the meantime subscribe to his youtube channel and you can find him on facebook too he puts up a lot of interesting things so with that we'll go ahead and uh, stop the broadcast but thanks a lot everybody we'll see you tomorrow at noon for level-headed news <laughs>